Good morning. Whoa, hey. <laughs> Good to see you all this morning. Welcome out of the rain, from in out of the rain. <laughs> uh, we're glad you're here this morning. We're going to go and get started. Speaking of rain, I think maybe this will be mentioned later, but there were a couple of ladies who left an umbrella uh, yesterday here from the ladies' uh, banquet. So if you're missing one, you might want to check. I don't know if it's in the office or still downstairs. They're in the office. So small, short, little black uh, umbrella. So when we started yesterday with the banquet, it was pouring rain uh, a few minutes beforehand. Time we got done, it was sun was trying to shine a little bit, and it was nice. So, so somebody must have forgotten their umbrella on the way home. So, anyway, let's get started. Stand with me as we sing number six forty four in your songbook. Six forty four. pages to number 578. 578. How firm a foundation. I'll preach your comment, open the morning service in prayer. 578 in your songbook. outside and it is pouring I'm thinking the Lord really understood that at some point in time in my life I wanted a lakefront property because if you'd seen my backyard this morning I got it so, preacher. with that now we'll be baptizing outside today yeah. <laughs> let's pray father we thank you Lord for this wonderful day though it is a little rainy a little dreary but we need that just as much as we need this sun we thank you, Lord Jesus, for having a wonderful building that we're able to have heat and cooling and lights and uh, windows and protection from the elements to be able to worship you. And we just ask, Father, that that's what we do exactly today, that uh, you bless all that you see and do here and pray, Father, that we honor you and pray, Lord, that you'll bless this service, put your hand upon preachers that gives us the message. Amen. Amen. So with that being said, because it's such a dreary day, go shake someone's hand and bring them a little sunlight.
so that way. Find out if they want to meet on any DJ shit, or if they want to just go at their own pace, or yeah. and then meet just once a month. I think I mean it's not immediate. But what he might do is like a month, but he like yeah. to touch you know, the face or whatever. Maybe a question. So if they don't have problem. time, maybe if you want to set time for them to go out, that'd be fine. Yeah. However involved they want to be. <laughs> right. I'll get them as involved as I can. It's good to see all the smiling faces and all the laughing and cheering going on. So that was pretty good. So for me and my daughter, today's an exciting day. Um, I, pro I won't get into too much detail yet. Hello. Um, but I get to have the wonderful privilege of baptizing one of my other children again today. Uh, Friday, and, and I'll mention it when we go to the baptistry, but Sissy received Christ Friday afternoon when I came home from lunch. And I wanted to thank everybody who had their hand in it. I know that wasn't just our efforts. We just were able to seal the deal, but there was a lot of, with Kids Club and with uh, Sunday school and with services and everything, uh, uh, got her to a good understanding. And, and, and the graphics that she used was just amazing to, to display how she understood uh, God's love and rules. So we'll get to baptize her this evening, uh, right after the service. And then we also have uh, our evening service tonight at 6. Don't miss out. It's always a wonderful uh, time just to be in God's house. So we have our 6 o'clock service. And on May 28, uh, we have uh, Miller's with the Teen Serenity. She was asking about that this morning on the bus. So that's going to be on the 28th. That's right after service there at 2.30. And then on the 11th, on June 11th, I would like to have a meeting just briefly after the Sunday school or after uh, church on June 11th, uh, just shortly after for a few minutes with the track club, everybody that wanted to be involved with that. Uh, that meeting is pretty much going to entail what schedule that, that we would like to keep and, and how we want to go about meeting and what days and things like that to make sure that, that we have that opportunity for everybody to be there. So that will be following the service on June 11th, the Sunday service. And then on June 18th is our Fun Food and Fellowship Old Fashioned Sunday. We need to find an F word for Sunday. Does anybody know? Fun day? Fun day? First day of the week. There you go. First day of the week we have Food, Fun, and Fellowship for Old Fashioned First Day of the Week Sunday. So, And that's on June 18th. We're also having... Um, a steadfast quartet uh, from Grand Rapids Mission to come and, and sing for us. Is that the same one that we had here before? No. Nope. Okay. So this is a different quartet than what we had here before. So that's going to be even more exciting because I haven't heard them yet. So cool. Yeah. yeah the steadfast quartet. Uh, there's another one called Steadfast Quartet. It's more it's kind of Southern gospel. This one's called The Steadfast Quartet. Uh, from Michigan, a uh, group of, of brothers, young men, uh, who I saw at one of the MBF pastors' meetings, um, and they were there, uh, and so uh, we lined them up for Old Fashioned. So I think you'll, you'll, uh, you'll enjoy them. All right, as far as uh, prayer, oh, I did want to say something about, again, the ladies' banquet yesterday. I appreciate all those. It's already been said, but those who uh, had a hand in preparing, planning, and, and putting all that together, uh, few of us men just showed up and did what we were told, so we just uh, put the food out when we were supposed to and stuff like that, so, but uh, it was good, so uh, there we had, the Fisher count was 30 uh, ladies there yesterday, so uh, it was a good time, so uh, if you missed out, sorry, <laughs> uh, next year, all right, <laughs> all right, as far as prayer requests are concerned.
Is that song? Anybody know the song? Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. And the song says, I know who holds tomorrow, I know who holds my hand. Right? Amen. Thank you for that offertory. Uh, this time you take your Bibles, and uh, we have scripture reading this morning, and Mr. Caleb was going to come and read some scripture for us. And the, it's in your bulletin, I forgot, Matthew s- chapter 16, start with verse 13, Matthew 16, 13. When Jesus came into the coast of uh, Syria, Philippi, he he asked his disciples, saying, Whom, whom do men say that, that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said unto, and they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say he, ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but thy Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall prevail not against it. Not pre- shall not prevail against it. There we go. One of my favorite verses: "And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it." And it's so true, uh, Lord God. So, as uh, before, we sing our last song here. Uh, uh, I want you to start thinking a little bit about uh, the old-fashioned service and the cookout we're going to, or the picnic we're going to have there. We've done everything there is as far as meals. So uh, Brother C and I are asking for some ideas. Uh, we've done we've done chicken, we've done ham, we've done roasting a hog, we've done everything. So I want to do something a little bit different this time, but we're just asking for a little bit. Of, what would you guys like, I guess, is what we're asking. So let one of us know. I won't be here next weekend, but I'm sure C will. If you, if you think of something in the week or write it down and get it to one of us and we'll put together a menu and, and roll with it from there. So, But uh, that being said, take your song books and uh, stand with me and turn to number 577. Brethren, we have met to worship and on that first verse, uh, Miss Rachel will take the junior, chi- junior church children. I believe we're going to meet this week upstairs in the end hall down there. Is that correct? Yep, that's correct. So don't go downstairs. You're missing happy. Oh, I just got reminded, and that is true. We got a birthday coming up this week, actually two of them. And I was already told I can't say what I want to say, so we're just saying happy birthday. So Jason and Heather both uh, have their birthday on the 23rd of this week, so we're going to sing happy birthday to Jason. Oh, there's Jason. I say somebody go round him up. So they sing happy birthday. Then we'll start singing a song, and the ch- kids can go. The kids can go with Miss Rachel. Okay? okay, that's fine. We'll just sing it. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday Miss Heather and Jason, happy birthday to you. And see, I think Jason cheats a little bit because he decided to have his birthday on the same day Heather did so he can never forget her birthday. So it's just, it's just, not, it's just not fair, you know? I mean, it's just not fair. Happy birthday, you two, and you guys are a, a very valuable asset to this church, and we enjoy your fellowship, your Bible knowledge, and the way that you are great parents to your children, and we all appreciate that, and we wanted to tell you happy birthday. So let's sing, Brethren, we have met to worship as the children leave for Junior Church.
thank you. Take your Bibles. Maybe you still have your place there. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. I'm going to preach this morning message how the church that Christ is building. Matthew 16. If you look at verse 16, there in Matthew 16, it says, Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then in verse 18, Jesus said, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let's pray. Father, bless this time in your word. We'll thank you for it, for what you accomplished through it, as we open our hearts and minds to you. This I pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Heard about a fellow's church was having a business meeting, and this one particular fellow and uh, there's nobody here like this, thank goodness. But this one particular fella, he was a, seemed to be against everything, you know. And so this business meeting, they brought up, uh, somebody brought up and said, I think we need uh, a new chandelier uh, in, our, in our sanctuary. Well, this man right away, he stood up, I'm against it. Uh, he said, number one, nobody can spell it. Number two, nobody here can play it. And number three, what we really need here is more lights. So... You got to know what you're for, what you're against, I guess. <laughs> but I have a question this morning. Why did God put First Baptist Church here uh, in this community some, well, over 100 years ago? Why, why uh, did he place us here? What is the purpose of having a local church such as ours in this community? I want to look at just three things this morning concerning the church. And as Jesus addresses some things here, we'll kick us off. Notice, first of all, I want us to talk about the definition of a church. So we're going to have a proper understanding, okay? Uh, a church, we, you know, we drive down the street and say, well, there's a nice looking church, or there's a, but that's not really the church, is it? We're looking at the, the building where a church may meet, but the church, the definition of a church is uh, with, where the word comes from literally means an assembly of called out ones, all right? And uh, it's used in the Bible in two different ways. Number one, it's used in a universal sense. That is, we are all, those who are saved, are baptized into the body of Christ. And so if you're here this morning, you're saved, you're a part of the, the church of God. Uh, you're a member of his family, a member of his church. Uh, but also, then secondly, it's used in a local sense. The church at Philippi, the church at Ephesus, the church at Thessalonica, and on and on and on. Uh, and, and, you know, sometimes uh, somebody may say, well, I'm a member of God's worldwide universal church, and I just don't, I don't need to be a part, uh, a member of a local church. Uh, a church, because I'm a, I'm, I'm a member of God's church. <laughs> well, understand, the word church is used 115 times in the New Testament, and of those 115 times, 98 of those times, the word refers to a local <laughs> New Testament church, body of believers, an organized, visible, organized local church comprised of those who are saved, those who are baptized, and those who are walking in obedience to God. And so God desires that his people be part of a local, Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, New Testament church. Now, I know today uh, it's not very popular to preach on, on a, a church membership because we don't want to scare people away, all right? But I'm, I'm here to tell you this morning, number one, it is important, and number two, it is scriptural. Uh, a church is about a group of saved individuals who covenant together to encourage and support each other uh, and, and to walk in obedience to God and to serve together in unity. It entails commitment. It entails accountability. Boy, that's a scary word now today, isn't it? <laughs> right away again, some say, well, I'm, only, I'm not accountable to anybody but God. Well, Scripture begs to differ with you. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, it says, Obey them that have the rule over you, speaking of, of elders or, or, or pastors, but he says, uh, church leaders, Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. And so I was asking you a question this morning. If there's no biblical requirement to belong to a local church, then which leaders is an individual supposed to obey? <laughs> It's supposed to uh, uh, listen to. It's supposed to. Are, are we? Uh, are you supposed to listen to the to the, loon, the the pastor or loons at the at the Westboro Baptist Church? Is that who we <laughs> who we are, are obligated to? No. And more personally, who will I, 
as a pastor give account for? For every Christian in Kosciuszko County? Or even every single person that walks through that door and maybe we never see again? Am I accountable for what they uh, do with their life and, and for their spiritual growth and their spirit? How does that work? Acts chapter 2, verse 41 says, They that gladly received the word were baptized, and the same day were added unto them. They were added unto God, but this says after they were saved, they were baptized. So after they were added to God, after they were, added, after they were baptized, they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Who is the them? <laughs> the local church. The local body of believers as it was coming into to fruition there on that day of Pentecost. Uh, in Paul's letters to the church at Corinth, in teaching how a ch uh, church how to deal with an unrepentant, uh, unrepentant sin in its midst, uh, the words within and without are used in reference to the local church body. So how do you know who's within? How do you know who's without? If there's not some uh, form of, of, of formal acknowledgement or attachment to the church. And so it, it's clear that when someone gets saved, God desires them and expects them to be baptized, number one. And number two, to become attached to a local Bible teaching uh, Bible-believing New Testament church. So the definition, it's an assembly of called out ones, okay? And what we are doing this morning here is the church is meeting, right? In a local, a visible, uh, 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 formal way. Uh, but secondly this morning, notice the foundation of the church. When and where did the church begin? Some say it began with Peter. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Some say it began with John the Baptist. Some say it began uh, after the resurrection of Christ, immediately after the resurrection of Christ, and, and maybe there's even other ideas, I don't know. But look in Matthew 16 here, the verse that we read, and again, verse 16, where, uh, well, first of all, Jesus asked the disciples, who do men say I am? And, and then he asked Peter, said, who do, who do you say I am? And he says here in verse 16, Simon Peter answered, he said, thou art the Christ, the Son of of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed unto thee, it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I also say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So the key is, in verse 18, Jesus said, Upon this rock I will build my church. So what is the rock? Again, some try to interpose here, Peter, that he was saying, okay, Peter, you're the rock. That's not what it says, is it? <laughs> he didn't say, uh, Peter, upon you I'm going to build my church. Is that what he said? No. He said, uh, you're Peter. Peter's name, by the way, comes from the, the Greek word petros, which means uh, a piece of stone, a piece of rock, a pebble, if you will. But then Jesus said, uh, upon this rock, and that was a different word there, Petra, it means this mass of rock, this foundation. He said, I'm going to build my church. And so the rock he's talking about was not Peter, but it was the basis of Peter's confession, wasn't it? Yeah. Peter said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And, and I, think, I think there is some, some, uh, something Christ is trying to relate to Peter here. He says, Peter, you're going to be a piece of what's going to happen here. <laughs> yeah. uh, you're going to be part of this. But what he says is, I'm going to build my church on this foundation. Uh, again, the essence of Peter's confession there. The church was instituted and founded upon Christ himself. In fact, again, when Jesus said in verse 18, upon this rock I will build, whose church? <laughs> my church, Jesus says. Christ is the one uh, who instituted the church. Christ is the head of the church, not some man, and uh, I'm sorry to be disrespectful, but not some man in a pointy hat uh, somewhere. <laughs> Uh, or, or some uh, man who, who receives some kind of message from, uh, secret message from an angel in the woods and, and, uh, and then he took all the stuff with him and so all we have is the word of that one man. Uh, no, Christ is the head of the church. We've got the testimonies, don't we? Uh, and we've got the evidence that, that he gives us, but he is the one who is the head of the church. Ephesians 1.22 says, God gave him, Christ, to be the head over all things to the church. Colossians 1.18, he... Christ is the head of the body, the church, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Boy, there's a good lesson, isn't it? <laughs> in all things, who might have the preeminence? Him. <laughs> Christ Amen. might have the preeminence. Sometimes, I, I, a lot of times, people get that wrong, don't they? Yeah. Sometimes I've, I would venture to say, I would dare say that even independent, <laughs> fundamental, Baptists sometimes get that wrong. Uh, 
They can lose their focus by following a man instead of following Christ. If you, you go to a, a preacher's meeting or you go to a church service and you hear more about uh, the accomplishments, the greatness of a man than you do in Christ, there's a problem. There's an issue there. Uh, and uh, uh, the Bible says we're called to make disciples of Christ. Not disciples of this preacher or that preacher or this man or that man. <laughs> we're to make disciples for Christ. Jesus said, I, we need more preachers like John the Baptist, don't we? <laughs> Who said, he must increase, but I must decrease. <laughs> John wasn't in it for, for his own name recognition. <laughs> he was pointing everybody uh, to Christ. He says, I will, be, and not to belabor the point, but uh, uh, what happened when Peter, somebody fell down at Peter's feet, <laughs> Cornelius, right, and began to worship him. What did Peter say? Get up off your knees. I'm just, I'm a man just like you are. Yep. That kind of refutes, by the way, also this other thing about authority over the, the, the whole church. But anyway, uh, and so the papacy, all that sort of thing. But, but the, the moment we begin to, to, uh, worship a man and, and again you say well, I would never do that well again sometimes we can be guilty of that and not right. we would never say it verbally but uh, uh, our allegiance is to Christ first of all and foremost to Christ now as a man is obedient to God and, and is, is using a good example uh, as Paul said be examples uh, uh, as we are examples okay but the problem is again uh, I don't know if anybody's ever, I better not go too far, but you've been to a funeral or been to a service, and all you hear about is how great this person was. Very little, if any, about how great God is. And I've said before, whether it's for our church or even individually, I don't want people to look and say how great First Baptist Church is or how great that uh, preacher is. No, I want them to say, boy, God is sure great. He's doing a lot of great things in First Baptist Church. There's a difference there, isn't there? Amen. But anyway, the foundation, Christ said, I will build my church. And by the way, Christ is still building his church, isn't he? Uh, in, in John chapter 1, it says, uh, he, he came into his own, his own received him not, but as many as received him, that to them gave you power to become the son. That's still going on. He's still building his church. In Acts chapter 2, we see the local church come into existence and empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. But every time someone is saved, trust Christ as Savior, they're added to his church, to the body of of Christ. We see the definition of the church, we see the foundation of the church, and then finally this morning, and this is really kind of the crux of it, if you will, the mission of the church. The mission of the church. Why are we here? As a church, what does God say our, our primary mission is? Is it to feed the hungry? To take care of the poor? Uh, is it to be a place where believers meet to, to have fun and socialize? It may not be wrong in any of those things. In fact, some of those things are good. But what is our mission according to Scripture? What is our God-given purpose? What ought to drive us as a church? Well, I find three things specifically that God gives for the local church. Number one, our, our mission is to worship God. That is, uh, to, to honor Him in our midst. Much of what is called worship today isn't really worship. It's about making people feel better about themselves, not about glorifying God, not about obeying His voice. Uh, and worship is not what, and by the way, worship is not always a pleasant experience. Can I tell you that? Isaiah chapter 6, you read Isaiah chapter 6, um, when Isaiah fell down and he worshiped God, and he had a pretty traumatic experience uh, initially. He saw himself, he saw, uh, uh, he, he talked about uh, a person of unclean lips from, uh, from a people of unclean lips. Uh, and he needed to be cleansed, he needed to be purged, and that sort of thing. Uh, but, but worship is not what happens up here on the platform, okay? Uh, it's not about uh, having a worship team or worship leader or worship whatever. Worship is what happens in the individual hearts of the people here. And so we can sing the songs and we can pray, we can read scripture, we can do all sorts of things that, that promote worship. And you can go out of here and never having worshiped God. Worship is about uh, the heart. Uh, it's about what happens uh, in, in the heart of man as we honor God. Not just with our lips, but with our heart. So, number one, the mission of the church is to worship God. That's one reason we meet here. Secondly, we meet here, uh, the second mission that we have is to evangelize the world with the gospel of Christ. You say, well, I can't evangelize the whole world. Well, the Bible says that's what we're to do. But uh, as Brother Bachman said a couple weeks ago, 
we're to evangelize the world uh, where we are, okay, to play our part in that, in that mission. And if you go to Matthew chapter 28, we're here in Matthew, so just turn over a little bit. Uh, and Brother Bachman dealt with this a couple weeks ago, so we're not going to spend a lot of time here, but just read these verses and give us a reminder. Matthew 28, verse 19. Christ's very last command before he departs this earth. That's what we find here. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, I find often that uh, somebody's last words are, are what's most precious, most important to them. <laughs> it's what's on their hearts and minds right before they're ready to depart this earth. And so it is with Jesus. Uh, and his concern, his uh, last concern for leaving earth ought to be our, our concern. Uh, we used to, when we were at Evangelism, we had a, a, I don't call it a tagline, but uh, under our newsletter heading, making Christ last command our first concern but let's look at what he says here verse 19 go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even to the end of the world so what's he say a couple key words number one he says go right jesus remember that in that parable he's talking about going into the highways and hedges and what compel them to come in that's a little different than, than uh, uh, sitting in a pew and, and wishing, praying, hoping that people come, right? He says, go. Go with the highways had to compel them to come in. By the way, we're not going to be very compelling if, uh, if we're not walking the walk. Uh, if all we do is, is uh, make our, our, our Christianity you know, known, we may go to church on Sunday, people may, but... Uh, if we're not walking in every day of our life, we're not going to be very compelling. We're not going to be very compelling either if we uh, walk around looking like we've, we drank a, a quart of lemon juice, right? <laughs> That's not very compelling. Uh, people can get that attitude anywhere they go. Uh, I think we told the story before about uh, our daughter Crystal when she was just, I don't know, a year and a half, two years old, just learning to talk, you know, kind of good and kind of well. I should say I need to learn to talk better tonight, but learn to talk well. Uh, but uh, she was in the kitchen and, and Laura was doing something and making something. She put, had some lemon juice and put it in something. And, and Crystal, what's that? What's that? And Laura said, that's lemon juice. Juice, juice, you want juice? Laura said, no, you wouldn't like that juice. Uh, and she persisted. So after about four or five times, Laura said, okay. So she got her a little bit of lemon juice in a you know, cup and uh, let, her, let her drink it. All right, well, that kind of took care of that problem. <laughs> but uh, sometimes we can go around and we can have that sourpuss look on our face uh, and how inviting is that, you know? And you know, I go to the First Baptist Church. You know, that's not very inviting, is it? But we're, to, we're, we're told to go, to compel them to come in. But secondly, he says we're to teach. Teach what? What's our message? I'll tell you what it's not. Our message is not, well, you just got to believe in yourself. You just got to think positive. Right. You, gotta, you can make it happen if only you believe. You know something that, that's sad? Those philosophies used to be the philosophies of the world. You'd hear it all the time around you. What's sad is now those philosophies are in the church. Yeah. Uh, in pulpits across America. Uh, there will be, you know, be a lot of positive thinkers in hell. Do you realize that? Except they won't be so positive anymore. <laughs> Our message is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our message is that, that man has a need, man is a sinner, that Christ came and died on that cross, that we might be forgiven. As we call upon him, he will forgive, he will save our soul. It's the gospel, it's the same message that was preached by the Apostle Paul. Same message that was, that was preached by Peter and James and John. The same message that was preached in, by faithful, declared by faithful uh, preachers of old, such as, as uh, Charles Spurgeon and, and Dwight L. Moody and Charles Finney and on and on we can go. It's the same message. It hasn't changed. That makes it kind of easy, doesn't it? Yeah. We don't have to wait for the latest version to come out or the latest uh, news or latest explanation, the latest uh, edition of, of whatever. You know, you, you get computer programs and things, and I don't know about you, our, my computer's always wanting to do updates. You know, this is version, version 3.02.012. You've got version 4.3.01, so you need the next newest version. Well, <laughs> the gospel's not like that, is it? <laughs> uh, it's the same gospel, the same message that's been preached uh, for, for centuries. We proclaim it uh, from the pulpit. We teach it at Vacation Bible School. We promote it as God gives us opportunity, whether it's Pearson Days or whatever it might be, or through the track club, whatever it is. Be why? Because it's part of our mission. Because it changes lives. 
It's not just tempor- in a temporary, su- superficial way, but for eternity. Changes lives for eternity. So number one, our mission is to worship God. Number two, to evangelize the world. And number three, to strengthen the believer. Yeah. To strengthen the believer. That's another reason. Again, church is important. The local, visible, organized church. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. And we'll we'll uh, kind of wind down a little bit here. Ephesians chapter 4. And verse number 11. It says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why? Verse 12, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying, the building up of the body of Christ, till we all come in unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. And speaking the truth in love may grow up into him all things, in all things, which is the head, even Christ. What is the purpose of the, of the New Testament local church, the purpose of the gifts and those here he talks about there in verse number 11? For the perfecting of the saints. Uh, the, the growth, uh, the maturity of the saints, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And then he says, till all we, the, the local church is there uh, to serve this purpose until we all come in the unity uh, of, the, of the Son, of the knowledge of the Son, into a perfect man. The purpose, verse 14, of the church is so that we're not thrown about by every wind of doctrine. Well, that sounds good. We run over here and get a few things. Well, that, that didn't work out, so we go over here. Well, the local church is a stabilizing factor, isn't it? As again, we partner together, we unify together around the things of God. It says, again, verse 15, that we may be grown in all things, and to him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Why do you think the disciples met together? Again, look at the book of Acts. Why they met together, not on a weekly basis, not two times, not three times a week, not four times. It says they met what? Every day, together, daily. Why do you suppose that is? Because they needed each other. They needed the fellowship. They needed the encouragement. They needed the exhortation from the word of God and and from each other. Acts chapter 2 again, verse 42, it says, They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in breaking of bread and in prayers. Verse 46, And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. And so God has put the local church here Uh, For you and for me, for fellowship, for encouragement, for strength. Our mission is to worship God, is to evangelize the world, and is to strengthen one another, strengthen, edify the body of Christ. And so I guess I would ask the question, what are you doing in your part of that mission? Who's the church again? It's everybody here. How are you doing in the aspect of worshiping God? Not just on Sunday. We do that every day, but here we do it collectively. Uh, secondly, how about your part in evangelizing the world? How about your part in strengthening, encouraging, exhorting, uh, uh, building up the body of Christ? Oh, we're good at tearing down. <laughs> I know that after, uh, well, I don't know how long, 30 years of ministry. Um, we can be pretty good. People can be pretty good at tearing uh, down. But how are we at building up the body of Christ? Go to Hebrews chapter 10. We'll close with this.
again, I would, I would submit to you to, to, uh, uh, to organize ourselves in, in, a, in a very tangible way uh, so that we can encourage one another, help each other. around some of those things, but what are you doing in your part? Worshiping God. Uh, do you, do you uh, uh, how faithful are you in the house of God? Secondly, in, in uh, spreading the gospel, what are you doing to play your part in that? That's why we had the, the track club a few weeks ago and, and why we're going to be building on that, but, but how, are you, how are you doing your part there? Or in the encouraging one another? This morning, I just simply, uh, I'm going to ask for raised hands this morning, but if there's something in your heart or something that, that uh, is, you know that you need to recommit in your life concerning your walk with God uh, or your work for, for God, uh, and that's, again, the reason that we meet here, so we can help each other and, and build each other up in those, those requirements that we have as believers. But I'm going to pause just a few moments and let you talk to God, and then we're going to close in prayer, and we'll sing a song as we prepare for our baptism. Talk to the Lord just for a few minutes, would you? Father, I thank you for the church for the body of Christ. Yes, Father, we understand that it's not just about us right here in this place. Your church uh, is around the world. But, Father, you've instituted, Christ instituted, not just that worldwide uh, body, but indeed uh, he instituted the local, um, organized, visible uh, New Testament church of which we are one here in this place. Yes, there are many, but you've given us this place to worship you. This place to, to, to carry out uh, that great command, that great commission. Uh, this place uh, to, uh, to encourage and to build up the, the body within our ranks, within our walls. And so, Father, being part of a, a local New Testament church involves commitment, involves accountability not only to you that's certainly first and foremost but to one another and that helps us along in this this uh, journey of life as we see the day approaching father we need each other and so help us not to forsake uh, the assembling uh, of ourselves together in this place uh, and uh, that we might again just be found uh, faithful to you uh, faithful uh, in all these aspects that we've addressed this morning. So just work on our hearts, Father. I would pray each individual, you know each individual heart in need. Uh, Father, I know there's, there's uh, things in all of our lives that, that sometimes uh, get in the way uh, of obeying you. And, we, and we, we're good at making excuses. Let's be honest. We're, we're good uh, at saying why we shouldn't do what you have clearly commanded us to do and desire us to do. But Father, help us to put aside those things and just to, to step forward in obedience uh, and, and, and honor faith to you, and we know that you will honor us for doing just that. Bless as we close this service together, as we sing this, this song, that just again reminds us, if we desire you to bless us, to, to work in our hearts and lives, uh, that we need to, to trust you and obey your word. This I pray and I thank you for in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your hymnals, turn to 385, please. 385 will sing Trust and Obey. Stand together if you would, please. Bye. 
So Friday afternoon, I came home from work, and she started, she took a book, and she started opening up, started reading out of it, and then she folded it, folded her hands, and she did this a couple of times. It's like she was preaching at me, and so I asked her, I said, so were you preaching? She kind of got this little smile on her face. She goes, yeah. I said, okay. So I asked her, I said, so... Is lying a sin? She says, yeah. I said, why is lying a sin? And this is what got me. Because she took her hands and put them both on her chest, and she says, because it breaks Jesus' heart. And she pulled her hands apart. I said, really? Stop your playing. Stop it. <laughs> and, and then she said, and then uh, Mommy started asking her, um, how we fix that and she goes by the blood and, and we asked her says, where'd the blood come from she goes Jesus and I said how did Jesus start bleeding she goes the cross I said that's awesome then we asked her where you go when, when you sin and she goes to a bad place I said okay I said where do you go when you get saved she goes to heaven I was like all right so we asked her that day, he says, do you want to go to heaven? She goes, yeah. I said, so we're going to have to pray. And she goes, okay. And so she prayed after my wife uh, right there on our bed, and she accepted Christ. And then we asked her um, yesterday, he said, so you want to get baptized? She goes, yeah. I said, so why are we getting baptized? And I was just asking her there. It's because Jesus said so. So she has a very tender heart, and she is very willing. So you ready? All right. Oh, you're all right. Mommy's going to take a picture. Emmy, you remember what we did on Friday? No. Did you receive Christ as your Savior? Yeah. Yeah. And we're following in believer's baptism? Yeah. All right. So, Emmy, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I baptize you, my sister. Hang on. You're all right. You're all right. Ready? Hold your breath. Raise to walk in newness of life. All right. All right. All right. Stick around and. But let Emmy know your plan for her, all right? Thanks for coming this morning, and a uh, great way to serve us. So let's stand together. We'll close in prayer. Uh, and uh, again tonight, meet right back here, uh, 6 o'clock. And uh, we're going to, I'm ringing just a little bit, Adam. But I was going to say, we're going to finish our series. We finished our series last Sunday, so we're going to.
uh, park somewhere else tonight just for a little bit. Let me just tell you, so just so you can kind of think ahead a little bit, uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, my intention at least, uh, plan is to kind of building off of this morning, talking about the local church, I want to ask why we have the name Baptist out there on the sign, okay? And so for several weeks, we're going to, I think, look at uh, some for to the Baptist distinctives, something, but, but I think it's important we know why, what's in a name, right? <laughs> names are important. Some would say not names aren't, but names are important. But we will look at that, I think, uh, on Sunday mornings for a while, uh, starting not next Sunday, but the Sunday after is the plan, all right, unless God changes something there. But all right, let's close in prayer. And uh, Brother Jason.